This episode is sponsored by Knit It, Hook It, Craft It and Lynn Row Knitting and Crochet. You can find links to both our businesses on the podcast website. Hello. Hello, Faith. Hello, how are you doing? I'm fine, thanks. Good, good. So welcome to episode five of the Crochet Circle podcast. This episode is called Practically Perfect. And in this episode, we have got Yay Crochet or Nay Crochet magazine roundup. We're continuing with our crochet journey and we'll be giving you some more helpful hints. We've got a little bit on World Knit in Public Day, finished objects, whip wall update and a new section which is called Feeding the Habit. Not the rabbit, Feeding the (laughs) Habit. And then we'll finish off as usual with What's Good. Starting out, yay crochet Lynn or nay crochet? Well, this month, Faye, I have a nay crochet. So mm, I mentioned in the last episode that we were taking a holiday, which was really lovely. It was good to take a break and spend time with my family. Now, I did take along a couple of crochet projects with me, not necessarily to do every day, but just to, you know, just to have them there in case. When you're ready to relax. Yes. We were on a ship, so we had a couple of sea days, and I noticed on the sea days there was a craft club in the afternoon. Oh, brilliant. So I thought, oh, shall I go along or not? (laughs) Sneak and see what everyone else is up to. (laughs) So the boys had gone to play shuttleboard or something of that nature so I thought okay I'll get my crochet out and I'll go and have a sit and it was in the crow's nest so you're right at the front of the ship so it's really nice you see oh, all around you've you. got panoramic views yeah oh, lovely. It, really lovely I'd say there were about half a dozen ladies there maybe seven and the guy that was running the club who was attempting to sew which was <laughs> <quite> <laughs> hilarious so I sat on the table with the lady, we had a really nice chat, she was designing a little blanket so we were chatting about that <laughs> and then eventually the two ladies that were sewing came and said oh you know you look like you're really good at crochet, could you teach my daughter? So I was like oh, I didn't want to say no because that sounded really rude but I literally only had the bar bar brick house yarn with me or lace weight which you can't teach somebody to crochet no. with. So I said, well, I can show you, but I will have to unravel and take the yarn back with me. I'm sorry. You so. may not have my yarn. <laughs> I'm not my yarn. <laughs> so we sat and I showed her how to crochet, which was great. Um, she picked it up really quickly. And then at the end, I thought I'd put my hooks back in the bag. I was using the hook that I lost. It wasn't the other lady. And we'd, I did have the two hooks at one point. So where the hook went, I have absolutely no idea. But when I got home, no Addy crochet hook. My favourite one, favorite one? 3.5 mil. I use it all the time, and it's the ergonomic one. It should be shaped like a toothbrush, which I really, really like. So I thought, oh, well, I'll buy another one. Do I just replace one? Do I buy a different size? Do I buy a whole range of sizes? Do I stick with the Addy? Are there other hooks out there that maybe will be? So all these questions and started coming into my head and I can't make my mind of what to do. Well, it's I'm just, in a quandary. Isn't it lucky we're going to Wolf Fest tomorrow and you can try it and fix? Well, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. I thought, okay, at Wolf Fest, I'll just see what's around and see if there's any that I can pick up and hold and, with them and, as well. and see if I think, well, actually, I might buy a different make or a different type. Yeah. So I like mm-hmm. just the plain shaft ones because of the way that I crochet like a knitter and also if I make a mistake I can just quickly flip it out I don't have to yeah I do so it speeds up my process so Mm -hmm. I can imagine if I lost my favorite one I would be beside myself so I feel your pain you know we just get to shop tomorrow (laughs) sounds fine to me so yeah yeah, what I was going to say was if anyone else uses ergonomic hooks and has any tips for me or any advice that might help me decide I'd be ever so grateful but at least I didn't lose my crochet that would have that's been true that would have been so much worse that's how I kind of <laughs> crochet <laughs> flapping off with <laughs> sea <laughs> seagulls a very well dressed yeah. seagull <laughs> <laughs> right I have a crochet yay which is I have finished one of my tops Brilliant. one of my stylish garments it's actually sat in the office it's on Claude the mannequin and I'm so so chuffed with it And in particular, I'm really pleased with the changes that I made in the pattern design, but also in the hook size that I use, because I think it really achieved what I wanted to achieve. So I won't go into it in too much detail now, because we'll come on to it under 
um, a crochet journey. I've worn it a couple of times. It looks and fantastic. It's lovely. It's really, really nice, Faye. The but colour of the yarn that you've chosen, the yarn that you've chosen. It's just it's lovely. lovely. Like for a first ever garment, yeah. I've made what did I made the Duke a couple of little cardigans but knitted. So this is the first garment that I've ever made for proper human size. Mm -hmm. It's the first garment that I've ever crocheted and I'm I'm hooked. I like I'm I've got another one already started and I just I love it. And I feel do you know what it is? I feel like a proper crocheter and a proper knitter. Yeah. Because I've done a garment which is so ridiculous. I felt the same way when I did socks. I was like, Oh, it's that level of attainment. Yes, you think, oh, it's going I must be getting level. better. Yeah. But actually, it was so easy to do. And I don't know why I had such a, a, a blind spot about it previously. I am the garment crochier now, that's it. I'm absolutely hooked on it. So we'll have a whole wardrobe oh. full of crocheted tops, I think, yeah. from New Faye. wardrobe, pantaloons. Probably Jimena. in the next two months, knowing how quickly <laughs> Faye crochets. <laughs> so yeah, that's my yay. Um, but I'm also going to cheat. I've got a knitting knee. Okay, don't. I did say a it's a little bit of knitting on the side. I have been doing a shawl for my friend, and this is how confident I was. In the show notes, I have written it's a finished object because I'm oh. oh, overly confident. Like the bravado <laughs> when I was writing those show notes, and I will have that finished. It will be done. It's quite a large shawl, and it's got a lovely construction, but it requires a pico edge bind off yep. cross. I think it's about. 300 stitches wow and i started the other night i was like yeah i'm just getting a hang of the um the pattern it'll be all right and then last night after about an hour and a half i think i was maybe about 30 stitches in oh wow gosh and i just took the executive decision one i don't like fuss anyway and the person that is going to be the receiver of this shawl isn't particularly fussy okay. either and i think all i'm going to do is a stretchy cast off because yeah. The pico bind off was a bind. Is um, it because you have to keep adding extra stitches and then you bind off? And they're yeah, you're, you so the construction is different. Instead of going almost horizontally, you're then coming vertically vertical, down. Yeah. So to bind off two stitches, you've got to actually knit about twenty five stitches. Right. Oh, oh my gosh. word! I mean, it takes long enough to bind off anyway. But a pico edge bind off. Yeah. Whoever made that. They can keep it. I think I've, I've, the only time I've done a pico edge bind off is where you increase by only two stitches and then you cast off four. So it wasn't too onerous. Yeah. But I can imagine if it's like 25 oh. or so. It's, wow. And That's last a night. lot of extra work. Yeah. When it, when it was like an hour and a half in and I'm looking at it thinking, this isn't happening tonight. And I want to talk about this on the podcast yeah. tomorrow. And I was like, rip it back. It took, it took me maybe a tenth of the time to rip it back. <laughs> Put your stitches back on. <laughs> so, yeah, knitting me. Fantastic. But I'm sure your shawl will be just as nice without yeah. it. Ain't no pico. <laughs> <laughs> so we will move on to Magazine Roundup. And just to say, this time we're going to include another... Um, it's not really a magazine, it's a quarterly. It's called Pom Pom Quarterly. I'm sure lots of the listeners will have heard of Pom Pom previously. And it is a really beautiful publication. It is more of a publication and it's out every three months, hence quarterly. A fifth of their patterns, they generally have about 10 patterns, and two of them this time round were crochet patterns. So we figured we should start featuring um, Pom Pom as part of our magazine roundup, but of course it will only be every third podcast. And they do uh, garments as well, so it kind of yeah. links nicely to our stylish crochet. It does, yeah. Topic. There was. Um, a kind of a summer top and a really lovely shawl this time mm. round. So, Lynn, magazine roundup. So, we got? oh, we've got quite a few magazines this month. We have Inside Crochet issue 79, Simply Crochet issue 46, Crochet Now issue 3, Let's Get Crafting issue 82, Women's Weekly Knitting and Crochet, which is the July issue, and then we have the Pom Pom Quarterly Summer 26 issue, and we also have a new magazine, issue 3, called Love to Knit and Crochet. So quite a wide range of magazines now building yeah. up in the review. But across all of them, I think there was one thing that stood out for me in Inside Crochet that I really enjoyed reading was an interview with Betsan Corkhill, who is the founder of something called Stitch Links, which is all about the health benefits of crafting. 
She's a well-being coach, Bethan, and she focuses mainly on the therapeutic benefits of knitting and how it can improve your health and mindfulness. So it's not really just about enjoying knitting, which yeah. we all do, or crochet. Um, it's about meditation and calmness and stress relieving and yeah. helping to improve your mood. There's a lot of science behind it all, and it's just fascinating, really. So I'd definitely recommend going along to one of Betsan's workshops if this one near you. I had a chat with her a couple of weeks ago, and it really, like I say, it's just fascinating. Yeah. So that was one thing that stood out for me. But overall, in terms of the projects, I'm finally bringing Faye round to the darker side of crochet, <laughs> to the fun side of crochet, because Faye has chosen Claude the Octopus He's from amazing. Simply Crochet. It's huge. Len, so normally, Len loves fun knits <laughs> and crochet, and I am very utilitarian and practical, but what would I do with it? However, when I turned the page in Simply Crochet and saw Claude the Octopus, well, one, my mannequin is called Claude, so I was drawn to him because of the Claude thing, but also he is amazing. Like the construction on him, the colours yeah. that have been used. I don't think, being truthful, I don't think I'd ever crochet it because I would put other things to the top of the list. Yeah. But I can 100% appreciate the amount of work that's gone into making that design. It's incredible. It it's little suckers, everything. his eyes, everything about him. He looks really anatomically correct for an octopus I'm I could, amazed I could just imagine a child with that it's probably be as big as a small child what, you know, <laughs> having it on the bed and giving it a big cuddle so that was Faye liking a bit of crochet fun there and I think for me it's it a one time to... thing don't worry <laughs> <laughs> whoa that's what you think it's the Altair by Joanne Scrace and it's in Pomcom Quarterly and it's a shawl it's just really pretty yeah. and it looks quite simple to make. So Yeah, and it's one skein as well, yeah. so it's a really nice, you've bought that special skein, yeah. use it up in one project and know that you're not going to run out. It's yeah. lovely. So I'm going to get a copy of Pom Pom so that I can make that. And so I'll put all the links to each individual magazine in the show notes, and links to Ravelry so that you can see the projects there and if you see anything you like, you can go and get the magazine and give it a go and we'd love to hear what you make. So that's it for the magazine roundup this time. Thank you very much, which brings us swiftly on to a crochet journey. So we started this in the last podcast and it's really about running through the stages of making garments. So last time we talked about yarn substitution and doing tension squares to make sure that you've got the right set up from the get go before you start making your garment. Yeah. And this time what we would like to talk about is some of the issues that we've had and the pattern set up and getting it right. So do you want me to go first? Yeah, if you go okay. first. Okay. So I started the Lisa sweater which was inside crochet and I think I mentioned last time that I only had five balls but I needed nine. So I hunted around and managed to find an extra four balls. Obviously when it came the dye lot, which I knew the dye lot was going to be different. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about the dye lot and just explain what it is, because I'm aware that if you're quite new to knitting and crochet, you might not really understand what we're talking about, yeah. or you might not have come across it before. So if you're new to crochet, on the ball band of every ball, ball of yarn, you've got all the essential information about the yarn itself. So that's uh, what it's made from, what needle or hook size to use, the tension that the yarn gives um, in a certain stitch and also the weight of the ball. You will also find printed on is the shade number of the yarn and then next to that there'll be a little reference number. Usually it says LOT, L-O-T and that's the, the kind of batch number almost of the dye that's been used for this particular batch of yarn. So it'll be have a little number on it. And what you should do if you're buying yarn for a garment in particular, or even if it's just for a scarf or an accessory, when you pick the yarn up in your yarn shop, just make sure, have a look on the ball band and make sure that the shades are all the same, but more importantly, that the batch or the lot all have the same numbers yeah. on. Don't assume that because it's it looks neat on a shelf that it's all going to be from the same dye shade yeah. lot because actually people have rummaged about in that some of that stock might have been pushed to the back it's not like going to the supermarket where the oldest food comes to the front yeah. so you really have to take the time out to double check 
one of the things I also do is I tend to overbuy because then I've got lots of little kind of smaller skein or um, scrap yarn projects that I can do and I'd rather have too much of it than have too little because yeah. I will never be able to get that down lot again. Overbuying isn't that horrendous really because you've got your tension square to make. Like Faye said, you can always use it for an extra extra project and you might use it anyway. I mean, if your tension isn't quite right, you might run out of yarn. Yeah, and actually I think that's another decent point. Most designers, I don't think, add in the amount that you would need for your tension square. So I would always assume that whatever weight they tell you that you need, that does not include the amount that you need for a tension square. No, it's, that is just the amount for the garment. Yeah. Usually about a 10% give on that. So I've ordered my yarn, it's come, and it's a ever so slightly different because it's a mild yarn that I'm using, the Rowan Pure Life. It's not that noticeable, no. so actually I don't think I need to do anything specific I thought that the front and back were separate. Yeah, you were talking about this in the last episode. Yeah. You thought you could use one dye lot for the back and one well, for, for the, the front. front. That would be perfect. However, when I started the pattern, I'm thinking, this is a really strange, this is really going to be a long jumper, not realising the front and back are done in two pieces, but it's like goes over your shoulders. So it's so a left-hand side yeah. Yeah, and a right-hand side. Yeah, so there's only two pieces, but it's in two halves from the centre like you say left hand right hand so if I use two different batches it could be noticeable in a certain light that one half of my jumper is quite different to the other mm -hmm. so what I'm doing is I've started my jumper I've used so far nearly two balls of yarn so when I get to the end of my second ball when I'm at the end of a row I'm going to join my other batch and do the next ball yeah. next two balls in that and then I'll do exactly the same on the other side so even if there is a little bit of a difference but because it's on the outside yeah. near the sleeve area it'll just blend and maybe look like a gradient so, so other than that how is your crochet journey so going? my crochet journey started I made a great big long chain and I was meant to do triple trebles but actually I just found that a little bit too long of a stitch sort of the height of the stitch was a little bit too high and I couldn't quite get my rhythm going with the triple treble yeah. so I thought mm, I'm not going to enjoy this I know I'll try double treble instead yeah. so I'm actually using where it says triple treble I'm using a double treble but the stitch is quite interesting because you don't go into the top of the stitch you kind of go below the stitch around a little bit of the post of the stitch but it's quite difficult to explain but luckily in the magazine there was a picture showing you exactly where to put your hook which was essential because you you wouldn't have got the right effect otherwise yeah. so I've basically got like a tram line effect I've got little ridges going it's across looking great. yeah it's really I've, I've never ever used that sort of technique before I'm happy with the double treble Obviously my stitch is quite a little bit shorter, not too much shorter, but when you're doing sort of 20 rows, it's going to have an impact on the size, but it's quite a baggy jumper. Yeah. So I'm thinking, well, maybe I don't want it to be that baggy anyway, no, so I'll just petite, adjust so... it. Yeah. I'll, yeah, I'll adjust it as I go and I'll probably do most of one side and then I'll start the other side and then see how I go for the width see how much yarn I've got left and if I think oh well I've got enough yarn to do a bit make it a bit wider then I will but otherwise I'll make it a little bit more fitted so I'm not worried about running out of yarn and I did realize well actually there's a there's a welt around the the waist and then there's the bands around the sleeve so if I did run out of yarn I could actually just get a contrast color and just yeah, they do some, that there's in. a lovely oatmeal colour that would go really nicely yeah. with it. So I'm not worried about running out of yarn because I think well I can you know make adjustments to the pattern anyway you'll find a way around it but i am enjoying it i thought i would be a little bit further along than i am but for me i'm going to say this is a miracle <laughs> <laughs> nearly done two balls so let me think there's nine nine balls needed so quarter quarter yeah. of the way almost i'm doing well fantastic and for me i'm going to talk about the liala top again and some of the construction issues that i had with that the liala top is made up of two separate sections it's a solid section and a lace pattern section and although i have 
changed the hook size that I've used and I've changed the yarn. Actually, I found that there was an issue with the basic stitch count. So it calls for 131 stitches on the front panel and 131 stitches on the back panel. And then when you move on to the lace pattern, you're meant to have 133. And because it was the first panel that I was working on, I didn't have the confidence to just think, well, I think that's a mistake in the pattern. And I ripped it all back and I started again. And I think I did that five times over. And then I came to the point where I just thought, well, I can just add two stitches yeah. in and who is going to know? Like seriously, I don't think, although, we are hoping to see Marie Wallen tomorrow at Wolfest. She might I be able to see those two stitches. I don't think she'll count the stitches on you. <laughs> you don't think so? No. You don't think I she's going to look and say how lovely it like, is. Nice try, but I can see those those four stitches you added. <laughs> but, you know, that's that thing, isn't it? It's that thing about the perfectionist and you're, you're doing something that you want to wear and you want it to be the best that it can possibly be. And I wish I'd just saved that time where I had ripped it back five times and just added two stitches in because it makes no difference. I think the thing is though, Faye, you hit on a point there though, it's a confidence thing, isn't it? And knowing, well, actually the pattern must be wrong because when you buy a pattern, you just assume the pattern's correct. So many people in my classes have brought things to me and say, oh, you know, I'm stuck on this and I can't get from A to B because I don't have enough stitches and then when I have a look at it I say well actually there is a mistake in the pattern well how do you know and and it's just that experience I suppose I did unravel mine a couple of times Faye actually on that point I forgot to say because I kept losing stitches just because the nature of this particular pattern I think at the end I must have been forgetting to do something and I ended up with two lost stitches I thought you know I'm not undoing this again yeah. and I literally just added two added stitches and can you see it do you no, know what I it is about so you haven't it, I did forget exactly. you just mentioned it so that's kind of what we're trying to get across is yes you can be an absolute perfectionist but to what actual gain at the end of it if you're not going to know about it so this stuff happens it you know does. life is not perfect no Stuff does perfect. happen. No, exactly. But Mary Poppins is perfect. Apparently so. Practically so perfect in is, every way. This is why the episode is called Practically Perfect. Go on then, tell them why. So, we were, we'd were been out with the crochet circle to do an interview. We were driving back, Faye got a laptop out, and we were planning, every second count, you see, planning on yeah. the way home. I'm trying to drive, <laughs> make it look like I'm a good driver. We're trying to have a meeting as well, decide what we're going to talk about today did all that and we what can we call it and we went through loads and loads of names and you know it's takes so much time it <laughs> it's quite a lot of effort yeah it is a lot of effort and we're going through and through and then I don't know how we kind of got onto this sort of errors and making mistakes and I came up with like Mary Poppins practically perfect in every way and Faye kind of looked at me as if to say well what are you talking about <laughs> it's like you know Mary Poppins when she takes the tape measure out and measures the children And then she measures herself and it actually on the tape measure, it's not a tape measure with numbers on, it's a tape measure with comments on. So one of the children was like, needs constant cuddles. I can't remember what the children were, but it was a a sentence. And then Mary Poppins is practically perfect in every way and it zooms in on the the tape measure because she is, she's perfect. And Faye was like, well, I've never watched Mary Poppins. And I was like, no, you've never seen Mary Poppins. No. So then we talked about Julie Andrews and Dick Van Dyke, who are just my favourites. Uh, who knew Chitty Chitty Bang Bang is not the same film no, as Mary Poppins? <laughs> who knew that? Not me. So that's how we kind of ended up laughing about it in the end. But just to add a little bit extra to that, the very next day at home, My daughter's friends came to stay who were dancers and it turns out we ended up, it wasn't me, it wasn't my doing, I wasn't fixed on Mary Poppins. (laughs) She just came up at the conversation at dinner and Tom hadn't watched Mary Poppins or Chitty Bam Bag and equally got mixed up with the songs. So it's not just Faye who hasn't, uh, I'm going to buy a Mary Poppins and Chitty Bam Bag, make her watch them and sing the songs. Yeah. It's just not the type of household I grew up in at all. <laughs> you see, my children would watch Mary Poppins and then we'd all do the old bamboo dance with the wooden sticks <laughs> in the lounge. Whereas I was running fennel, lighting fires and building tree houses. That was my childhood. So there we go. <laughs> 
<laughs> See, yes, it's practically perfect. Yeah. Because your rendition of perfect may have a few mistakes in it, but it's actually about what's practical for you at the time. Is it practical to keep on ripping back and ripping back? Or can you just do a bit of a fudge yeah. and live with it? Because actually, nobody is going to know. Yeah, have confidence in what you're doing. Be practical. And everybody's idea of perfect is quite different. So next time round, I think we'll be doing a little bit on blocking and possibly making up, depending on how much detail we need to go into yeah. with blocking. But if you're interested in any of the things that Lynn and I are making, so the Lisa sweater or the Leala top, um, notes are on Ravelry. So what's also been really fantastic is that other people are getting in on the crochet garment action. And we've seen some really lovely examples. I think in particular, a lady called Helen, who's been doing the Aberfoyle cardigan. Yes. And I think on the back of you seeing Helen's Aberfoyle, you're now, that's been bumped up. I think you're going to do Aberfoyle instead of Aster, is that right? Yeah, well, what second happened one. Uh, was I thought I didn't have any yarn for the Aberfoyle cardigan, because I do like it, and I thought yeah. I haven't made anything in crochet. Well, I'm very limited myself on crochet garment making anyway, but it's from the top down. It's from the three from the top yeah. booklet. And I thought, well, I don't have nine balls of yarn so in the same four ply so that's just out should of have the come question. to my stash yeah come, <laughs> come raid face stash. my dash for stash is plenty then i was looking for something and i thought you know what i have got all this yarn and it's the gardener organic four ply that i have mm. it's all certified organic they started off quite small with their own sheep but they grew that quickly that they have to now take in fleeces from other yeah. farmers but they buy direct from the farmers so there's no middleman yeah. and it's all certified organic so it's all very sustainable but what I liked was they had a shawl on the stand which had been made from all the beautiful yeah. shades the natural shades and when I felt it it was so so soft very different to how it felt on the ball yeah so that's interesting really because you might pick it up and think oh it's a little bit crunchy you know for me I'm really sensitive yeah. so i perhaps not thought of that yarn for a garment or an accessory that would go around my neck but having seen it washed now i know it will be absolutely fine yeah. washing and blocking makes such a difference to yarn to wool in particular mm. and not not to everything but actually you can't feel what's on the ball or in the skin and think that's the end product no, it will be exactly the not. same one of the skins that i've got that i'll I'll talk about exactly that. It's in linen and what you feel to what the end product mm -hmm. is, is so different. So I basically counted up and I think I maybe got nine and a bit, maybe maybe it's 10 altogether balls of this yarn. So that was from seeing a, another project on the Ravelry forum that yeah. we have that's encouraged me to think, right, I'm going to make that. And Helen was saying that she really loves the pattern because it's top down. She can try it on right the way through the stages and she can make it longer if that's what she wants, which yeah. is what I think she's doing. But she's made sure that it fits across her shoulders at the very beginning stages of the pattern so perfect. she can make changes practically perfect, perfect yeah. if she needs to. Um, I think she's got like a um, kind of off-white and a really lovely mauvey yeah. purple that's coming through. It looks, it looks, it looks really nice. And she's been posting in the Ravelry thread for the Crochet Circle podcast. It looks fantastic. And then also another one, and I've stolen her... So actually, we're just like a couple of magpies, aren't we? we? Are. Because... We want to do everything. I'm doing that, I'm doing that, I'll have that. I was, I was looking for a second garment to do, now that I've already whizzed one off the hook. <laughs> Sharing <at> me. <laughs> and I was looking at another Marie Wallen one, but actually what I wanted to do was a different designer. And then another of our lovely listeners, Jojo Twinkletoes, I'm assuming her name is Jo. I think it is Jo. Yeah. yeah. I couldn't actually find it on Instagram yeah, or Ravelry, but you know, if you're starting out with Jojo Twinkletoes, I'm guessing her name isn't Twinkletoes, and I'll <laughs> go with Jo. But she was doing the wrap over top, pinged her back a message on Instagram to say, What is that? <laughs> and she gave me the details. And so that's what I'm crocheting up. When I say at the moment, I mean as we speak, that's what I'm working on. You've nabbed Aberfoyle from Helen, and yes, I have, I have. nabbed. Um, the wraparound top from Simply Crochet from Jojo Twinkle Toes. So and I love it. So yeah, I've got my second garment on the hooks already. I imagine Faye will finish her second garment before I've finished my first one. I know, but this is really simple. 
It is 450 stitches. It's quite a lot though, that, isn't it? Well, it doesn't help that, of course, I've yarn sobbed again. I'm going down a hook size again because of the way that I like garments to look or my crochet to look. Um, But also I'm going on holiday on Saturday. Yeah. So by the time this episode goes out, I'll be coming back off holiday. So I don't mind telling you that I'm off to France and I'm going to sit and crochet and crochet and crochet and crochet. And we're going with my best friend and her family. So we've got the Duke and Winky and Jenny and Fraser. So we're all going away together and Jenny is just desperate for us to be able to sit, go to a spa and then come back and crochet. So yeah, I'm actually kind of hoping that I'll have this done by the time we come back. Okay. Because I'm also putting pressure on myself to have knitted a garment come Yarndale. Using the John Arden stuff that I bought last time at Yarndale, I want to be able to make the top that I actually bought that yarn for because then I'll feel justified in buying more. The problem is John Arbin are going to be at Woolfest tomorrow. Whilst I don't think I should be buying any more yarn, I know that John Arbin will be my first pit stop tomorrow and because I have my mill members card, I will get 10% off. You have a mill members card. Mm -hmm. So you know, I'm going to have to buy something from them. I don't need more yarn, but I'm going to go get more yarn. (laughs) That's it for a crochet journey this time round. If you're working on anything, we'd love to see it. We would. Because um, it does inspire other people as well. So well, both of us great. have been. Excellent. I never exactly. would have thought of the Simply Crochet mm-hmm. garment before. And it was only when I saw the construction of Joe's, I thought, oh, I understand what that's going to be. Yeah. And I think I had seen it on the front cover, but because it was in, a, it was in quite a baby pink, I was... If, if, I'm really drawn to something by the colour and baby pink really isn't one of my colours. Yeah. Although you'd think it is because that photo of me and my Erica Knight yeah, that's pink. is everywhere. Yeah. But it's not a natural colour that I'd though. go with. So, on to Woolfest, which we have just mentioned. Lynn and I are off there tomorrow. We've talked about it quite a bit in the podcast, so I won't go into much detail about it. Other than to say that there is a listener to the Crochet Circle podcast called Tamara, and she lives in Texas, in America. She has never been to a fibre festival before, although she's massively into crochet and you know, she mm. teaches crochet. And she's going to her first fibre fest. And as it happens, her fibre fest is on at the same time as our wool fest. So we figured what we would do is we've created a, a set of questions for tomorrow that we will also answer about the wool festival and what we thought of it. And then we can get an understanding from a complete Wool Festival newbie what they thought of the Wool Fest that was going on over in Texas. Yeah. And also then we can see the sorts of differences across the pond. Yeah. So a bit of a shore-to-shore comparison of fibre festivals. Because it feels like a lot of people are travelling further to go to retreats and to go to um, world festivals so it seems that people are going further afield to get their fibre fix and I thought it would just be interesting to see what a fibre festival looks like elsewhere in the world so tomorrow is going to give us a review and we'll feature that she's going to take lots of nice photos for us and we'll be able to gauge her excitement about going into her first ever fibre festival Wonder Will Wills was my first one last year and I, I was doing like giddy hand claps Although I was driving, <laughs> you know, the closer we got, I was going like, oh, we're nearly there, we're nearly there. And just the awe of getting into that massive market space, the smell of the sheep, just the mm. amount of stuff that was available and traders that I'd never come across. I was at the beginning of my crochet and knitting journey at that point. but You did go oh, away with it. huge bags, didn't you, Faye? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely enormous. Yeah. Yeah. I, I bought quite a lot. I've Indeed. used a lot of that stuff Good. as well, which is good. It will just be nice to relive that excitement through somebody else's eyes and to see what it's like across the pond. And I'm looking forward to Warfest tomorrow because I haven't been before and I think it's in its maybe 14th year or something. It's been going, it's for, been a going for a long, long time. time. It's, it's one of the first fibre it festivals. It must be, mustn't it? Mm-hmm. So again, I mean, I've only been going for the past two or three years. And the way that I was looking at it last night, looking at it, stroke justifying it, is <laughs> if I buy wool tomorrow, I'm not paying postage. Exactly. And I get to come across the vendors and talk to them about their products. And to me, that's really exciting that's to get the, the story behind thing. it. And yeah. their passion comes across. And that's that's largely what I love about wool festivals is the passion that comes from the vendors and the story that they've got to tell behind their products. 
I think when you when you start chatting to the vendors and they've hand dyed the yarn or they've written the book, they then you, you can just have the, yeah. like you say the, the stories there and it's yeah. just all interesting and nice to meet yeah. individual people. It's a, it's a different take on it. But Excellent. we're off to buy yarn. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was quite an evil laugh there. That was like my <laughs> evil yarn laugh. <laughs> That's it for now on Woolfest and the uh, Houston Fibre Festival. We'll come back with more. But look out for stuff on Instagram because we'll post bits and pieces we of what we're up to. Very exciting. We'll move on to World Knit in Public Day. Do, do, do. Let me rename that World Knit in brackets crochet in Public mm-hmm. Day, which is what I did all day long. What did you do? Well, you know, Faye, I hadn't come across this before and I think it was on Friday I received an email from Search Press saying, what are you doing tomorrow? And I thought, hmm. Uh, <laughs> sitting with my feet up and having yeah, some family time, exactly. what are you doing tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> it's World Knitting Public Day and so I emailed back and I said, well, I didn't realise this was a thing. You know, I, well, before I emailed back, I looked on the internet yeah. I thought, well, I haven't heard of this before. Maybe I have actually when I when I then looked on the website, but nothing yeah. major. So I didn't even know it was going on, and then I realised it was like a thing. So I emailed back. I said, "Well, I'm not doing anything." Mary said, "Well, no, us neither, but maybe it'll gain momentum, yeah. you know, which is fair enough." But then I did look to see what things were going on, and most of it was in London actually. And I thought, "Well, Faye's in London this ah. weekend. She'll be there. <laughs> With bells she can tell on. us all about it." I kind of knew it was World Knit and Crochet in Public Day. Which, it is a thing, but frankly, I do it all the time anyway. I'm shameless about getting my craft out because I just don't care what people think in general. And actually, I think it's quite nice and lots of people talk to me about my crafting when I'm out and about. And I know lots of people have that experience as well. So to me, it's not a big thing. But the reason that I engaged with it is because I was in London for a black tie do with Matthew's work. Ooh, posh. Posh, posh. Oh no, glad rags <laughs> out. Yay. Uh, although he does look very good in the tuxedo, so you know. Mm, hello, husband. <laughs> <laughs> next time he'll be in a kilt, actually. Oh, a bottom yes, of a kilt. So um, yeah, next time nice. he'll be kilted. Mm-hmm. What had happened was somebody else had booked the train tickets at his work and trains at 8.29 in the morning. Oh gosh. Not an issue, we're early risers, but we didn't have any plans for being in London. Mm-hmm. Quite often we'll go and do about a food market or we'll go to the Tate or we'll do we'll do something, we'll make an event out of it. And I was flicking through Instagram and I saw all this stuff and I was like, oh, it's uh, it's World Knit in Public Day. And then I came across something from, it was an email from Wild and Woolly. It was one of the London-based shops. And they were doing this really cool thing called the East London Yarn Triangle. So within Hackney, which is an area of London, there are actually three yarn shops that are all very, very different. And they'd created this really cool triangle between the three of them, where you went in, you registered with one of the shops, you could start at any of the three that you wanted to start with. And they would give you 10% off if you had shown three Instagram photos that you posted with a hashtag. They'd put on food, um, so there was cake, there was... Net with Attitude had wine. (laughs) I didn't have any. I should have done, but I didn't. And there was coffee and there was tea and they were just really lovely and friendly. But it was really nice to go into an area of London that I wouldn't normally go to. And there are three yarn shops that if you don't want to get on the train, actually they're within walking distance. Mm -hmm. We did quite a bit of walking, but it was nice. The weather was good. And they'd almost done it like a little treasure map. So they'd given you different points of interest, not told you where they were on the online information that you had yeah and as you were going from one shop to the next you would come across one of the things that you were meant to get yourself photographed with so it was a fire station a street vendor the pine mash shop next door to fabrications on a swing good good way to get the other vendors involved isn't it really and just get you more into the swing yeah it's really good fun we had a nice italian meal on the way through it was just really really nice and i went to three shops i hadn't previously visited so that's what i did for world knit in public day and i took loads and loads of photos of me on the tube on the train outside the hackney empire on a swing so you know burning question everyone can you crochet on a swing yes you can whole new way to view swing parks take your crochet take your crochet yeah 
Are those photos on Instagram, Faye? Yeah, they're on um, Knit It, Hook It, Craft It. Okay, but I'll, put, I'll have a look. I'll actually put some up on the Pinterest yeah, board for this nice. episode. Because, yeah, it's just really good fun. It'd be good to do something for that next year for crochet to take over. We're moving on to finished objects. Most of my finished objects, I do finish things, by the way. I know I've been having a laugh about that. <laughs> <laughs> you do. You do a lot of commissions. I do a lot of commissions. Stuff. And we've got our book going on. I've got another book. But I have finished quite a few things work-wise. Um, which you don't count in your whips. You keep no, them as a they're separate. just separate. And I can't show them either. So yeah. it, there's no point me talking about them. It's just one of those things. So I just wanted to make sure you do know that I do finish things. Do you do? You, you get do. through a lot of stuff. Yes. I finished my first project for the Crochet Circle book, which is really nice. Mm. I've just got to weave the ends in and I'm on the hunt tomorrow for some lovely buttons that will match it perfectly. And hopefully tomorrow, is it Textile? Textile Gardens. Textile Gardens. Yeah. will have the buttons that I want. She just has the most amazing array of buttons. Yeah. So yeah, one cowl is finished really happy i use barbar brick house yarn it's called barbar brew and it's a hand dyed it's really nice Lester. it's really really lovely and i've noticed since i've been using the two shades that i picked like a peachy color and sort of a brownie mix it's quite in at the moment yeah. which i didn't know I didn't purposely pick it because it was in but yeah quite ice creamy shades yeah. and just really really nice so i'm happy with those so that's it for that's me, really, great. Faye, yeah. I'm much the same as you. My head has definitely been in getting the stuff ready for the book. So I've got two bits finished. And I've been using Erica Knight's British wool, which is Blueface Leicester, which is lovely. It's really nice to work with. I washed and blocked it yesterday. And it's it's even nicer once you've washed and blocked it. And I, I just cannot say enough times. Your project was always nice when you finished it, but usually it's... It's even better for having been fully submerged, washed, and then blocked out. The wool just comes mm. into life, and I just love it. And then the other one that I've been using is um, it's Whistle Bears, and it's locally produced up in the northeast. It's just lovely. Like it's mohair and Wensleydale, which isn't everybody's cup of tea, but I really love it, and it's soft, and it has the most beautiful sheen on it it has an almost metallic quality about it and it's lovely to crochet with and it takes construction really well so you get great structure out of it and because it's got the Wensley deal in it actually you can block it into shape so you can get a beautiful sweep into something which I think is quite hard to do with mm. just a mohair mix mm -hmm. but I think the Wensley deal is aiding that and it's very hard wearing but very light so it's perfect for what it is that I wanted to make so yeah. I've got those two finished off the keen eyed amongst you might see just little swatches on something that we'll put on Instagram and on the Pinterest page so you can maybe see some of the colours that we're working with mm. for the book. So we don't want to give away too much detail, but you can see some of the colours and some of the pattern choices that we're starting to make. Excellent yeah. stuff. It is. It is. That and the other thing I've written down is my Henslow shawl. For my friend Lucia, enjoy doing it, but whoever invented the Pico Edge bind off is not my friend. It takes forever. <laughs> That's what I've written because I was so confident I would have it finished. So let me rejig that. But Henslow Shawl is not in my finished objects. And that's it. And the Liala top, of course. One final bit for me on a finished object. Do you remember my question of if you're knitting a pair of socks or crocheting a pair of socks and you've done one, is it an FO or is it a whip? And you said it's still a whip. Yep. I have an answer for you. On somebody else's podcast, I really love this. She calls it a hole. <laughs> <laughs> it's a half object. I like that. I like I that. Just, I just, <laughs> it's rude. <laughs> but I love the fact that I'm whole rich. <laughs> I just really Is it a whip, a foe or a hoe? <laughs> yeah. I had a John Arbon sock that I would have put as a foe before, but now it's a hole. Because two foes make a hoe. <laughs> Or two hoes no, make, make a phone. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay, so I think a few, maybe a month or so ago, I listed my whips on Ravelry, so it was quite handy that I did that. Yes. Because I lost my little notebook with yeah. my listing. So I have about 20 million notebooks that I write different things in. Don't know why I don't write them all in one book, but I don't. So I thought, oh no. I know, it was Ravelry right. went on there, so I've pretty much gone through the list, I had 14 and now I have 11, because I found that the pair of, one of my pairs of socks that I've started, 
really the little lace pattern down the front wasn't standing out because of the yarn because it was quite a fuzzy yarn yeah you just couldn't see the clarity of the lace stitch so I thought you know this yarn would be better suited for something so did you else frog it? It, I literally had only done like the foot part the ankle bit which I always think is a good indicator they're yeah. not happy with the project and it had anyway. been left and, I, and it's because I couldn't even see which line of the lace pattern I was on that's yeah. how bad it was so I thought well what's the point in me carrying on I've got other yarn I could use for the socks and equally I can use this yarn for something yeah. a little bit more suitable I got on my list a secret project for the crochet circle which was my long cowl which mm-hmm. I finished and I had on there a secret project with Eric and Knight Studio Linen but I haven't actually started that yet so it's not really a whip. No. So that got me down to 11. So there we go. And then I've got my Lisa sweater. Actually, that makes me 12, doesn't it? Yeah. That's not bad. So that's not you bad. You started at 21. 21. And I know from lots of other feedback from people that us talking about whips, people are going back, reassessing theirs and finishing off projects. Within the Crochet Circle group on Ravelry, there is a discussion board there called Whips feel free to go in there and use it for listing your whips. Lynn and I have done it, other people have done it, and then that is just a thread where you can talk about your whips, people will engage with you on it, but also I'm using it to update my list on a monthly basis so I know where I am. If, like Lynn, you usually have stuff in multiple notebooks, you occasionally lose them, Mm -hmm. Ravelry is a great way of listing all of your whips because you might not go to the lengths of putting it as a separate project each time. I haven't. And some of mine are projects that would be listed on Ravelry anyway because it's cross-stitch or something mm. else. I now use that every time I need to update yeah. the whip wall. I just go into that thread and then I know where you're up to and I know where I'm up to. And it's just a really good refresher for me to think, well, I haven't worked on that and I need to get scooting with that one. Yeah, I mean, I, I have to confess, I had 21 now. I haven't finished all of those projects, but it made me reassess what I'm making, why I'm making it, why have I not finished it, and why yeah. is it sat there? Yeah. Mm. So I thought, because of Henslow Shaw, I was on six, but actually Henslow needs to go back in, so that's seven. Yeah. And eight is one of the projects for the Crochet Circle podcast. So I thought I was doing really well. I was really chuffed that I was down to six, but I'm not. I'm at eight. But that's all right. My, my aim is to always keep it under... 10. There are some that I haven't made progress on that I wanted to, like the Shoreline's blanket, but then equally I've sorted two of the designs exactly. out for the book, so I'm you really chuffed with them. No, I can't. We're moving on now to our new section, which is called Feeding the Habit, which is really all about our acquisitions and the bad influence that I am on Lynn. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Lynn used to be really, you were quite sensible about your yarn buying, mean. weren't you? <laughs> Me, you mean were mean, you were so mean. <laughs> but you're not now. What no. is that? I don't really know. I think once you kind of get in to the habit of looking at sort of hand-dyed yarns, that's the thing for me at the moment. Yeah. I really like looking at the different colours and the different techniques and I like, oh, wonder what this will, will look like crocheted yeah. up and it, d- it also drawn in really it doesn't help that we interviewed a hand dyer last week which will go out that at some great. point in July yeah. so Lynn was like oh Ooh, this is nice. <laughs> I want all the yeah. things I was on my own when I bought this so there wasn't any influence from you fame <laughs> you see that I do it through osmosis yeah. <laughs> sending it through the waves yeah. the um, I went to London a couple of weeks ago to, to have a meeting with Search Press. I had a couple of hours to spare and the lady that I was chatting to, she said, oh, you could go to Iron in London. And she said, you know, Gerald is really nice. So it took me maybe 15 minutes to get there. And it was just this really lovely shop, loads of gorgeous yarns. And Gerald hand dyes his own yarn buys it from Chester I think Chester a lot of people buy it from yeah. Chester Walls so it was really nice to meet him and his two little dogs and I think his mum was there as well but what amazed me the most was the traffic in the shop was a lots and lots of people who were perhaps here on a holiday lots of American people yeah. and other countries asking for yarn that they can't buy yeah, you want home. that different thing to take yeah. home, don't you? He dyes Blueface Leicester 
and it's called it Starman. Yeah. Yeah. He also does one called Ziggy and a couple of others that link to David Bowie, who I absolutely love. He's my favourite person. So I've just had to buy it's not even my colours, I'm gonna say. It's quite it's quite far out of your comfort it zone is, for, but if, for your own colours. If you can think of the Ziggy um poster with his face paint yeah, and the zigzag it is, across it is spot on. it's those colours, the the bright blue, the electric blue, the red, um bit of black cream and so I just had to buy it and I'm gonna make something that I can wear. I'm gonna wear that. So yeah, so that was that's... my little purchase. Is that it? That was it. <laughs> She's got one skein. I have one. Hey. Hmm. I don't have one skein. You have bags. I know. <laughs> <laughs> she was trying to make out like I was being really good and virtuous. I'm not. Yeah. I've been a bit naughty this month. Okay. But I love yarn and mm-hmm. it's what I spend money on. For those of you that haven't been and if you're over that way at all, Shrewsbury is such a lovely market town to go and visit. It's got lots of independent shops. It's got a few high street shops as well and it has a yarn shop in the market hall called You and Ply and it's not very big but it is rammed full of really lovely stuff and whilst they'll do the drop side of things so they've got drops alpaca they also feature quite heavily on British wools and different breeds so they have West Yorkshire Spinners and Jimison's and Smith's Mm -hmm. they have Shillister in there which I love 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 even cottage as well is in there so they've got a really nice mix yeah. across different weights for such a small shop it was just lovely and the lady that was in there when i went in was called terry and she was just really knowledgeable she does crochet she was sat there spinning so it was big enough to fit her spinning wheel <laughs> into it and it was just really nice so i bought some eden cottage which i've had oh, earmarked for quite some time if you want to go and grab it it's the blue because we have both eyed this up quite a few times and I've never purchased I've n- it. I haven't yet bought Eden Cottage Johns and I really need to. Just lovely. And she also had a really nice West Yorkshire spinner. So I bought one of the, it's um, got mixed natural colours through it and it's a uh, roving yarn and it's absolutely gorgeous and it smells really sheepy. So I thought, well, that's it for the month because I'm going to wool fest yeah. and then of course on the Friday night, so that same day, I've bought those things, and then but you went to London, we did, we did right? London, <laughs> so I'd said previously to Matthew, oh, we might just nip into Loop, and then when I saw the East London oh, Yarn Triangle, I was like, hey, <laughs> we're going to three, but what I got was some really unusual stuff from each of the shops, so Fabrications is the one that's furthest south, they feature a lot of sustainable products, and what I got from them was actually recycled fibre, and I don't know quite what the fibre mix is, but it's mm-hmm. recycled within the UK in oh, London. It was part good, of the yeah. London okay. Remade um, project, which I know from my yeah, waste yeah. management days. And so I bought some of that. It's got really lovely creams and whites and kind of denim bright turquoises through it. I'll think of something mm-hmm. funky to do with that. It's really yeah. nice. And they had some nice recycled cards there as well. Just lovely stuff. But they also had the other two colours of the West Yorkshire Spinners roving. Mm-hmm. So within the one that I bought in, you implied that it has two colours through it. So now I've got the two colours as individual uh, uh, yeah. schemes as well. I've got something in mind mm. for that. I didn't just like wantonly go and buy that. Yes. I, I have a plan for that. And you do use your yarn, fairly. Yeah, I do. I mean, let's be honest, you do make things quite quickly, so you do yeah. get through stuff. I have lots. I'm not sure, looking at the, the yarn stash in front of me, <laughs> oh. this is the garage, the, the garage Annex. office annex. The annex stash. stash. I think that would last me a lifetime. Really? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> no. Maybe a good few years. But, but then you have your palace, your stash palace. I've got palace. the stash palace as well. But I got lots of inspiration from yeah. going through and rifling through I it and just being like, oh, yeah. I know what I want to use you for. And equally, it's no big deal. If I'm not going to use it, I eBay it and I get... Mm some of the money back which brings me on to the next one actually I went to on the East London was Wild and Woolly which I follow on Instagram and I get their newsletters it's a really fabulous shop it started just a couple of years ago one of the things she does which I've never seen in a yarn shop before she's got a little area called the stash depot and people can come in and bring in their unwanted yarn it gets sold for like two pounds a ball and then a pound goes back to the person that brought it, and then a pound goes to Walden Woolley. Brilliant. So, so everybody wins. Person gets a bargain, they get the 
little bit of money for exactly it. so i picked up rowan tweed for two pounds a ball no. and i got a few other bits and pieces but just really bargainous re-loving somebody else's stash yeah. so i have zero guilt about that because yeah. actually two pounds a ball for um rowan filtered tweed I think that retails at like seven eight pounds a ball, yeah, it's, so I'm it's not cheap. really chuffed. Yeah. And it's that kind of mustardy brown colour, oh, which I will definitely yeah. use. But then they also had a linen, which is called Kalinkin. Do you know what? I'm going to put my headphones down and I'm going to show you it because you'll feel it and you'll go, yeah. But it's amazing. In my wild and woolly bag. Yes. Do you do? It's nice, isn't it? Oh, that's nice. So this is a linen from, I want to say Denmark, is it Denmark or Sweden? Sweden. Sweden. And it's really saturated colour of linen, which you don't always get. Sometimes linen are in um, more muted tones, refer particularly to Edeka's and also Rowan's, mm -hmm. they're quite muted. This is bright, bright, deep turquoise. It's really rich. And so what sold me on it is exactly what we've been talking about, washing and blocking. I like it like that anyway. It's quite, it's quite coarse. It, it is, yeah. Um, you know, crispy. you'll you'll feel it when it's running through your fingers and uncrochet or knitting with it. But she showed me a shawl that she'd made up with the Kalinkin, and it was so beautifully soft and drapey, just because it had been washed and blocked. It was a completely different product. You wouldn't think that, that from this. You wouldn't scheme. think it, yeah, and it's absolutely it. gorgeous. And it really kind of fluffs up as well, so mm. you don't have that string-like structure mm. that you've got with it at the moment. It's, it's a, a bit completely twiny different like, thing. Isn't it, it is, almost. isn't it? And yet, once that's been worked with and softened up, and then been washed and blocked, it's totally different. I just loved it. Gorgeous. The, the colours. So they absolutely. even had like quite a vibrant red colour. Mm. It was beautiful. Mm. I couldn't resist that one, and I've got a thing about linen at the moment, so mm. I was quite happy to buy more. I think this just shows that going to your local yarn shop is a completely different experience than just looking online for yarn. I think if you're looking online for yarn, you're just buying stuff that you know you already want. Yeah. You go into a, a yarn shop where you can see finished products, you can see things blocked, yeah. and washed, and it's totally different. It is. It's just so, a great experience. So then one final one. There's a lot of hype about this product, and I don't like to jump on the bandwagon, but two things sold it to me. Lynn hasn't seen this yet. I might have bought some hedgehog fibres. Oh. The colourway. Let me see. <laughs> She's got little grabby hands. <laughs> it's called Dragonfly <laughs> and it's a Merino DK. It was 115 grams. So an extra 15 grams. And what sold it to me is actually, it says in it, made in Ireland. Now I asked a few more questions. Mm -hmm. And it's merino, so of course the, the actual yarn itself, the wool itself, has not come from no. Ireland. But I'm guessing it's spun in Ireland. Yeah, I don't know if it's dyed in Ireland as well. And I just assumed that that wasn't the case, that it was from much further afield. Okay. So that made me view it slightly differently. But the colours are so strikingly beautiful that I couldn't say no. I've only ever had that once that before, lovely. that breathtaking moment where I look at a skein of yarn and go... <gasps> what are you? I have to have you. You are amazing. And that was a Ripples Craft Hubble Bubble that I saw at a festival. That's really nice. I can wear merino. I can't ha wear a lot of the others around my neck, unfortunately. As much yeah. as I love some of the yarns that you buy, as soon as I put them near my neck, I have to take them off again. Yeah. You have a real allergy yeah, to I them. Do. I struggle really, which is a shame. So I do have to pick and choose. That was a lot of acquisitions from me. Mm. But so my birthday's coming up and yeah. people always say, oh, what do you want? So I know my dad will phone me and say, what do you want for your birthday? And I'll be like, I ate yarn. I you and know. they'll say, shall I just send you some cash? So I know yeah. that come my birthday in July, most of that is covered it's by covered. my daddy. Yeah. Oh, that's really nice. And he likes buying me yarn anyway. Yeah. Which is quite good. Yeah. Although it seems a little excessive. But Baby Bird as well, she said she didn't quite get to getting a Christmas present because I couldn't get the yarn that I wanted. So I've got two yarn skeins in the bank with her, so she'll yeah, she'll have she bought me a couple of them yeah. as well. That and I just can't say no. Well, I love yarn, it makes me happy. Why not? If it and makes I don't, you happy. Not an ounce of guilt matter. about it. Yeah, love it. Fair enough. Oh the other th the only other thing that I forgot to mention was when I went into Iron at London, you never guess what they sold amidst the yarn what? behind the counter. Llamas. Wine. <laughs> What? There was wine in a big fridge. I was like, that's unusual. I don't know if they sell but... it or whether it's just to consume. 
But I, I took, did take a photo, I put it on, but this is definitely yarn wine. and wine. Great How combo. amazing. Great combination. He's just missing cake. Maybe that comes <laughs> out from a separate... A separate hat. fridge underneath. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's a great combo. Yeah. Maybe that's oh, that's our ask? next step. A yarn and wine shop mm. in Cheshire. Mm. Chocolate, what, chocolate, chocolate yarn wine. Chocolate yarn wine. <laughs> There's your name. <laughs> <laughs> chocolate yarn wine does exactly what it says on the tin. Yeah. So that is our new section, feeding. Can we just call it feeding the rabbit? <laughs> you know it's going to come out every now and then. I'll have to call it feeding the rabbit instead. So now, not only do we have a, a yarn buying habit, we have to do it for the podcast. So oh, <laughs> I we like have to fill our sections. So now I'm going to have to buy yarn. A bit more than Let's one skein. Work, work yeah, immediately one skein. Get on with it. So we'll have photos up of all of our acquisitions. Yeah. Um, we'll list out what we've bought in case you're mm-hmm. interested in seeing. We'll make sure that you get the colour name and the, the producer. I, I feel yarn rich and very happy. Good. So our final bit is what's good, other than my yarn buying. <laughs> what's good for you? A couple of weeks ago, I think I was looking to check or uh, getting the link for my book. Someone had asked me about my book, so I went onto Amazon to get the link. You need to explain because you haven't talked about this before oh, on the podcast. Okay. So this was the book for my Once Upon a Time in Crochet book, first yeah. of all. So it's my Amigurumi little fairy tale characters that was out in 2015 I think so it's on Amazon it's on most bookshops as well but I tend to look on Amazon because it tells you what number it is in the listings so I'm in the craft section and I think I'm in the doll section every now and again I might have a look just to see if it's doing well it's always kind of in the top 20 ish yeah. sometimes it drops a bit down but sometimes it's number three yeah and i don't know how many people have to buy it for it to go to number three but it's nice you know, it's, it's quite there, nice it's, really it's just to see regularly. that it's popular and then i just noticed it said also buy this author and there <laughs> was my next book that's due out i clicked on it and my mandala book with search press as well it was already on Amazon, mm-hmm. ready to pre-order. So I was like, oh, how exciting. And what happens when you pre-order is you don't pay there and then, you order it. And then I think if they drop the price... Yeah, which they quite which often they do. Which they often do. So everybody who pre-ordered my Once Upon a Time in Crochet book, instead of it being $9.99, it had gone down to six ninety nine at yeah. one point. So everybody gets it for that price. So I was quite excited. And then this morning, really funny that my husband sent me an email and said... I've just had this and he forwarded the email he'd had from Amazon to his email address saying you might like to buy these books and it was my man to hold up. was so weird. It's quite funny. <laughs> Search Press have a little series called 20 to Make and there's 20 small projects within the book. So they're quite simple. Some yeah. are really simple and then they move through. You can order it now. It's out in October. Brilliant. Like normally when you when you write a book you can ask for yarn support and companies very kindly do send that through. But I was quite determined not to ask for any, any more yarn. I didn't want any more yarn coming to the house. <laughs> Mandalas are meant to be kind of stash busting. Yeah. So I thought, right, come on, get in that yarn stash, find some really nice yarns that have probably been sent to me anyway for yarn support that have got leftover bits. So I did use a lot of DMC, Natura cotton four ply and yeah. some of the chunky XL so that was nice so the colours did blend together well because they, most of them were from DMC so they do all look really nice together brilliant and great that it's a stash buster yeah. from your own stash yeah. and will be for other people yeah. that buy the book yeah. you so you comes... won't you won't want to because you won't want to kind of promote yourself but I'm going to make you <laughs> we're going to put that in the show notes so yeah. that people okay. can get a link to it my what's good I'm going to be greedy again I'm going to have to my first what's good, because I'm being greedy, is that a magazine got in touch with me about my stash tags from Knit It, Hook It, Craft It. Exciting. And whilst I've started the company up and I'm, I'm not doing loads and loads of marketing, mm-hmm. in part because I'm going away on holiday and the idea of loads of orders coming through whilst I'm on holiday and then me not being able to fulfil them wouldn't be good or having a delay on fulfilment. Yeah. And also, I just wanted to have a decent enough range on the website mm-hmm. to be able to have a good offering for people. Via Erica Knight, who'd said, you need to go and look at what Faye's doing, which, you know, That's in itself is amazing. Yeah. 
and she'd said to this designer, you need to look at these stash tags. And the designer then got in touch with a knitting magazine who got in touch with me to say, we'd really like to feature your stash tags. Oh, that's really good. And it is, and what's lovely about it is I'm not pushing it out to the magazine and <laughs> saying, here's my stuff, yeah. look at me, look at me. They've decided that my product is nice enough for them to want to put in as one of their product features, and I'm just absolutely over the moon with that. So when it's out there, I'll talk yeah. about it, because I'm sure that will be my yeah. what's good of one of my products is actually featured in a knitting magazine. Um, but yeah, I'm just over the moon. Yeah, that it's not me... Nice waving the flag and mm-hmm. somebody else has seen my products that I've designed that I control every yeah. single element of and they like it enough to feature it in the magazine that's like yeah, it's, re- it it's reaffirming it's to yeah. me that I'm doing the right yeah. thing and then the greedy bit is we should have put this in acquisitions but it's also what's good oh gosh yes. see we forgot I've forgotten about something but I these are the best of the last they always say I know that. I can smell sheep <laughs> sorry <laughs> this doesn't work on audio <laughs> We've got two mini screens and they smell sheepy and because we've both gone to smell them we both have little moustaches. <laughs> we'll have to do a photo of this. Why did it because you look like you had a moustache? I thought oh, that looks hilarious. So do you want to tell us what our moustaches are made of? Our moustaches are daughter of a shepherd Hebridean yeah. yarn. So Rachel very kindly sent us two little mini skeins to have a little play around with for crochet because she said she'd be interesting to see how it works with crochet. Yeah. And so will we actually. It's got a little mini skein. It does come in 100 gram skeins, but yes. we're going to have a little play around with this and try and think of what we can both make with this with the 10 grams. And then we'll do a review. On yeah, the we next will. Time. And I, th- I think that's interesting, but we will come up with two different little mini projects that you can make with so many meters of whatever weight of yarn. And this is 75% Hebridean and 25%. I'm going to say zwart balls but i know that other people would say zwart blaze because i think it's originally a dutch sheep breed it just smells so sheepy it does. and it's in the natural colors which are of course dark brown almost like going black, into black. black and then i can it? also see some of the staples have got a kind of creamy greenness to mm. them the, the story behind it is that a uh, daughter of a shepherd rachel is actually the daughter of a shepherd so it's her father's sheep which is really nice this is the second batch i believe the yeah. first batch was i think that was 100 percent hebridean and that was launched at edinburgh yarn festival and what i don't know is if it's always going to be a 75 25 mix now um, i'm not sure if the next blend would be different again whether she's testing different breeds mixed with the um, hebridean so I'd be interested to see Rachel, how it develops actually, yeah. yeah that would be good questions we're both going to test out the mini skein and crochet and come back I don't, I don't think a moustache is a viable <laughs> crochet project, although maybe that People is what I'll make with it. A bit like a big yeah. curly yeah. English gentleman mm. kind of a moustache. We're going to test that out mm. and see, but I love the fact that it is a 100% UK manufactured yeah. product, which we'll start touching on a little bit more in the coming episodes. We're going yeah. to do, we're going to wait until further into the year, probably really much closer to the end of 2016. And we're going to start doing a bit of stash diving. Yeah. And within that, we'll start talking about some of the breeds that you can mm-hmm. use for different things. And I've got a lot of different single breed stuff in my stash. Me too, actually. And it's, I like using things for the right purposes. Mm-hmm. So we'll start talking a little bit about that. Very excited yeah, to have so a little go that. with this. Yeah, this might be my holiday enjoy. project, another yeah. one. Definitely need to do a photo of our uh, Daughter of a Shepherd moustaches. <laughs> you look like... Um, do you know the policeman from Alo Alo? <laughs> that's Alo Alo. That's you Alo Alo. Like. And then, oh, the granddad of Chitty Bam Bam. I would say zero <laughs> frame of reference for me. <laughs> oh, dear. So that's it for episode five. As usual, we'll put all the links and the useful information in the show notes. And if we put anything on our own individual websites, I'll also link out to those. We have been using Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest and Ravelry as well so I think we've got over 100 members now on Ravelry which is really nice thanks for listening thank you very much thanks Faye Bye. bye